Welcome to part two of the two-player pinball machine build. Before I get into building, there's a couple of things I want to show you. First is uh, what's in this box. I ordered the pinballs that I'll be using, starting uh, probably in this video for testing, and if not this video, then definitely the next one. Um, so there's 10 of them, and I'll probably get more down the road, but 10's enough for now. The other thing I want to show you is what's in this box. So I have here just a bunch of specialty pieces for the machine, like uh, like springs and rubber bands and just a bunch of other pieces that will make the machine look good and function properly. Everything here is colored, so I've got a bunch of reds and blues and yellows, all to match the theming of the machine. Now that you know all about this, let's get to building. I took a trip to Home Depot to pick up some plywood. I ended up getting three sheets. Although I could have gotten by with two, the third sheet was insurance, in case I made an irreplaceable mistake. This plywood is meant for cabinets, and I decided to use it because it's perfectly flat and has very clean looking edges. The first thing to do was trace out and cut the big pieces. The bulk of the machine will be made of just a few large pieces. The sides, shown in red, will each be one piece. The ends, shown in blue, will each be a piece and the gray, which is the playing surface, will be made out of two pieces. So, six large pieces will make up the majority of the structure. Another thing I'd like to point out is the inside walls. At the peak, the wall is three inches high, and at the base, it's two inches high. I started by making and cutting out the two large, oddly shaped side panels. When sketching out the cut lines, I decided to make it a bit taller than originally planned. This will give extra space under the playing surface to do anything that I need to do. I cut off the extra space at one end of the board, then clamped the board to the bench so the cut lines were off the table. The excess piece became one big bow tie. Next, I cut out the playing surfaces. I marked the width properly and cut the boards longer than planned. I'll go back and trim them down when I know the exact length. At the peak, where the two slopes meet, the ends needed to be beveled for a flush connection. So, an end of each piece was trimmed at just over 10 degrees. The playing surfaces will sit on blocks that are attached to the side panels. So, I cut 12 blocks, 6 for each side. I marked the desired line for the playing surface, so 3 inches down in the middle and 2 inches down at the ends. I then went through and placed the blocks along the line. 
Although, right after placing the last one, I realized I did it wrong. I placed the blocks right up to the line when they should really be about 3 quarter inches or a plywood distance away from the line. So I re-glued them in the right spot using a scrap piece of plywood to get the correct spacing. I then did the same thing with the other side, but with only having to glue the pieces down once. Now that I have the line for the playing surface, I can measure exactly how long to cut the boards. I measured all the sides for redundancy, but they all came out to 39 and 7 8 inches. Those blocks are a really big help when attaching the boards. They make sure it's in the right spot and also give a secure surface to clamp. I gave ample time for those connections to dry before attempting to move it. When it was ready, I did a test fit with the other side. This was the first time seeing the machine taking shape. I had to stop and gander at it for a bit. I can't wait until it's playable. I then glued those pieces together and used pretty much every big clamp I had to hold it in place. Once that was secure, I flipped it over and put some more glue along all of the edges on the underside. This will really help secure those connections and make the frame secure. I let that sit overnight to dry and flipped it over the next day to examine. The top seam looked great. You can see where a few drops of glue seeped through and dried. And that's where I'll finish this video. You can already get a good sense as to how this machine will look by the way it's taking shape. That's it for now. See ya.